This is a native Power BI visual. Before, when you need, wanted to make something like this, you'd have to use some custom visuals, Deneb or SVGs, but no more. This follows international business communication standards or attempts to replicate the way that they use overlapping bars to show past year and current year, as well as red and green colors to identify how much the change is between those two periods. If you want to be able to do this, you're going to need the February 2024 release of Power BI, where they have some additional enhancements for columns, bars, and ribbons. The thing that we want to look at is the overlap enhancement to the columns. And simply by using this and a little bit of error bars, we're going to be able to create this in no time. So let's jump right in. To make this as easy as possible for you, I've simply put the data set that we're going to use in the description. So if you scroll down on this video, you can find this data set, which is only 12 rows. And I'm going to just select all of it, copy it. And I'm going to go into a fresh Power BI desktop and click enter data. Once I'm there, I'm going to hit enter once. And then I'm going to press control V to just paste out everything. I'm going to change the name of the table, IBCS data. And then I'm going to click on edit. Once I do that, it'll take me to Power Query. And there's only two things that we need to do, which is first split this column by delimiter. So if you click split column on the home tab, it's going to be the first option. And here we're going to select comma as the delimiter and press OK. That's going to separate everything. And now we're going to go to the transform tab and select use first row as headers twice. So I'm going to click it once and then I'm going to click it again. And now we have all of the actual values that should be the headers as the actual headers and all of the rows are nice and cleaned up. So I'm going to go to the home tab and click close and apply. Now we're going to make about nine measures in around a minute. And the way that we do that is if you go back to the description and scroll down a bit more, I have this little text here it starts with define and it's got a lot of different measures in it. You need to copy this and take it to notepad notepad plus plus somewhere where you can change some values. It could even be word. It's fine. Now I'm going to paste it into my notepad plus plus. I'm going to select everything and hit control H. What I'm trying to do is I'm going to replace all of these things here, the circles and the squares. The reason that I'm doing that is because YouTube simply doesn't allow me to use greater than and less than operators in the description. So I'm going to just this hit control eight, and I'm going to replace all of the circles with less than, and then I'm going to go into the square and hit control H again. And all the squares are going to be greater than. Now, once I've done that, you should have something that looks exactly like this. And I'm simply going to copy this control C go back to my Power BI report, open up the DAX query view, and I'm going to paste this in here. Now, I can see that something doesn't look exactly right, but I should, in fact, be able to app update the model, click on all of these little things to add all of these measures into my model. So let's do that right now. And that's it. So in just a couple of seconds, really, we've already added all of the measures that we need in order to make this. Let's walk through them one by one. So if you actually go here, we can see that the data set itself has a month number, a month, uh, you know, it's like name, 2022 data, 2023 data, and 2023 prediction. data. The prediction data only goes from November, December, and the 2023 data only goes up until October. So in this fantasy scenario, it's probably going to be like the mid October time. And we're going to try to see if we can show 2022 as the past year, 2023 as the current year, and what the predictions are going to look like in terms of how they relate to the past year. So if we go through the actual measures themselves, you can see that AC is going to be the sum of the data 2023. That will be actuals. Then we have PY, which is the past year, uh, 2022. And then FC, forecast as the 2023 predictions. That's perfect. Then we've also got a couple of other things, Delta PY. So if, uh, you know, it's like forecast is blank, then we'll look at the actuals minus the past year. And if for uh, the forecast is not blank, then we're going to look at forecast minus past year. The reason we're doing this is because, of course, we have not all of the values during this time period. So when you actually get to November and December, you want to see what the difference between the predictions 
and the past year is, not just the actuals in past year, because that's not going to give you the right values. Then we have the percentage. So we just have the delta PY subtracted, uh, divided by PY, pardon me. And then we've got a couple of other things which we'll get to in just a second. So let's just dive right in and we're going to open up by clicking the clustered column chart. Now it is actually possible for you to select the line and clustered column chart, but there's really no need for now. We're just going to click clustered column chart. Once we have this open, we're going to open a couple of things. Uh, we're going to put month as the X axis. And one thing that you're going to have to do is before you actually do that for the month, you want to select it. You want to click this button right here, which is the sort button. And we're going to sort by the month number to make sure that the month is actually January to February and not alphabetical. Then we're going to add AC, FC and PY into this, uh, into the Y axis. Once we do that, we'll see a whole bunch of different things. And this isn't, this isn't exactly anything close to what we want to see. So we actually have to go into format immediately. This is actually most of the things that we're going to use for the build the visual field, you know, it's like panel. So we're going to open the format panel and we can actually close this. Uh, one thing to note is that past year should be at the very top and it actually, you know, it's like matters what order you put past year, actuals and forecast is my preferred way to go. Now here, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to turn off the legend. We don't, uh, title, let's just call it IBCS bar chart. That's great. And then we'll go down and we'll, uh, okay. So we'll go to the columns first. Now, once you open up the columns, if you have the series selected to all, you can open the layout. If you have the layout, uh, you know, okay. So why I'm saying that is that if you actually don't have the series set to all, you can't open the layout. It's grayed out. So let's actually go and change all the series colors first. The past year is going to be white, but have a border. So all you need to do is set the color to white and put the border on. Then for AC, we're going to make the color black, but maybe not fully black. Let's make it the mid, mid black, 20% lighter and no border. And uh, forecast is going to be light blue with a border, which I'm going to make dark blue. Great. So it has just a tiny bit of difference between everything. Now this still isn't right uh, in terms of what we want to see. So you want to go back to all and go to the layout option. Now, once you're in the columns layout option, you can turn on this little button that says overlap. And once you do, you have the ability to actually make things overlap on top of each other, which is really, really nice. So let's, uh, you know, it's like space between categories is 20% by default. We're going to put the space between series to 50%. And now you can see that there is this overlap similar to what you can expect in sort of, you know, international business communication standards because they're overlapped. You can very quickly tell that the white is previous year's data. The forefront represents the current data. And with the color difference, you can actually see that this is supposed to represent predictions and not actual. Now that I think about it, maybe it is a good idea to have the actual legends on. Maybe we needed to change them. So it's a bit more apparent what they actually are. Okay. So this is already looking good. But now we actually want to have the different error bars in order to show if the values are positive or if the values are negative. And that's actually where the green max and the red max come in. So the green max, this, uh, you know, it's like item here is basically showing that if Delta PY is greater than zero, then it's the max value. Now, Delta PY is just, uh, what is the background? my, uh, you know, it's like subtracted by the foreground and that here would be positive, for example, and here it would be negative. So if it's positive, the green max is going to show the max value. And if it's negative, it's not going to show anything for the red max. It's vice versa. Now, the reason we actually have to do this is because we don't want, uh, you know, it's like to put error bars in and for that to be shown on every single bar. So, you know, we want it to be red when the when the past year is greater than the forefront and it, we want it to be green when the forefront is of course greater than the uh, than the past now in order to do this we're going to click on error bars and you can you know it's like see that there is a couple of different series now past year first one is going to be selected and we need to enable it once we enable it what we're going to do is for the past year we're going to put the upper bound as the green max now you can actually see that for all of the items where the past year is smaller than the, you know, you know, it's like uh, current year or the prediction, 
there's now a line being and that's exactly what we want we're gonna go we're gonna turn off the tooltip we're gonna go to the bar and we're gonna set the bar color as red now it doesn't really uh sorry this is green so it doesn't really matter what kind of green it is we'll just select a green color we're gonna make the width 10 10 is the maximum that it can be right now so that's what we're going to select the marker shape i'm going to select to none and the border uh, color doesn't matter but the border size you can set to zero and that turns the border off excellent now i'm going to go and okay so there's a lot of things but you have to scroll all the way back up to the error bars select the next series which is going to be ac for ac we're going to select the red max and by selecting the red max uh, now we should actually have this show up it doesn't because I haven't enabled it yet. So just make sure that you do. Sometimes it can be very confusing. So now that I've enabled this, I'm going to go to the bar and do the same. But now I'm going to select a red tint. We're going to make the width 10 once again, make the marker shape none and make the border size zero. Turn off the tooltip and there you have it already looks pretty good. Now, the last thing that you have to do is for FC as well. This is where the forecast is and for this actual, you know, error bar, you actually have to remember that if the, uh, you know, it's like smaller value is the past year value, then just the past year error bar is going to start. But if it is forecast here, then there is not going to be an error bar because the green one uh, that you've made start, uh, sorry, the red one that you made here starts from the actuals and not the forecast. So you actually need to make another one, another error bar for the forecast. I hope that makes sense. So we're going to put the red max in the upper bound once again. And once we do that, we are going to simply put the bar color to red once again, make it size 10, remove the marker shape, set the border size to zero, turn off tooltip. There we go. Okay, that was actually quite fast. And the only thing that you really have to think about for this now is going back to the columns and going back to the layout. Now, one of the things that you can realize is that if I make the visual bigger, there is this gap between, uh, you know, it's like the actual bar, uh, you know, error bar, which should just be called the variance bar, to be honest, the variance bar and the, you know, it's like, uh, and the bar in the background. Now, in order to get rid of this, if you increase the space between categories to 50, this will get you pretty close. Now you might want to uh, try, you know, it's like a couple percentages differences here and there. So 5%, for example, and the space between series 45%. And there you can see that the line has almost completely disappeared. And this is really just, uh, you know, it's like getting this value, right? I found that around 50 and 50 works really great. You'll also realize if you make it a little bit smaller, then maybe you want to actually take the width of this, uh, how would you say? The width of this bars and make them a little bit smaller for example five and you can see that it looks a lot neater it's all really just uh you know based on how big the chart's going to be i wanted this to be nice and big so uh, i've made this here now for the final thing that i'm going to do i'm going to go back to build a visual this uh panel and i'm going to select the max value essentially max value is just going to take the max value of every single item now if that's the case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it at either the front or the back. Now, this is really up to you where you want, uh, you know, it's like this to be, but I'm going to show you what you can do with this. Now, now you see that I have max value and it's really ugly to look at. That's okay. I'm going to go to columns. I'm going to select on the max value series, and I'm going to make it a hundred percent transparent. What's the point in doing this? Okay. The point in doing this is that you can turn on your data labels. And once you turn on your data labels, you can actually go through all of the different labels and turn them off. So past year, we're going to turn off uh, the other, you know, type items we're going to turn off as well. But the reason for doing that is because I want values to be at the very top of each column to indicate whether it's a positive or negative net difference. Maybe I want to show the percentage difference. Maybe I want to show the flat value, but I do not like that a lot of the, you know, it's like labels are kind of blurred and hard to see. Now you can do a couple of things about the fact that they're hard to see. You can add a background to the actual, you know, it's like text. So let's say we have uh, PY. 
that I just, you know, so if I turn this back on, you can actually make the background, you know, it's like not at all transparent and you can, it's very easy to see. Sure. So, uh, but that also still blocks, of, uh, you know, it's like a bit of the bars, a bit of the image. So that's not what I want to do. What I want to do is have only titles at the very top or, you know, labels at the very top. And in order to do that, I'm going to go through all of the series and turn off the data labels. Now, once I've done that, I can go to max value and in the max value, I can change the value. So that's a little bit wordy. So let me show you what I mean in the actual, you know, it's like max value series. I have it on and I can click the value uh, field here. And instead of max value, I'm going to select Delta PY. You may remember Delta PY is just the difference between the max value and the minimum value. And if I do that, then I actually have everything that I need in order to show the value difference, increase or decrease. This looks pretty good, but I also have one other thing. Now I have Delta color here, which shows if Delta PY is greater than zero, it's going to be red or it's going to be green. And if it's less than zero, it's going to be red. And now because this is an actual formula, I can click on this icon here, conditional formatting, click on format style to field value and select Delta color. Click OK, and now we have a perfect uh, conditionally formatted indicator of what you want this to be. Now, this is a flat value, delta PY, but if I wanted to show percentages, I could go to delta PY percent, hover, you know, it's like drag that into the field, make sure the delta PY is a percentage and that you have no display units, maybe it sets, uh, you know, it's like number of decimals to zero. And you have now a nice clean percentage difference between the past year and the current year. Now, if you take all of this together, add a background, maybe put the, you know, it's like year and month as a slicer. What you'll end up with is the final result. Thanks for watching. I'm really excited about where the Power BI visuals are going these days. I really hope you learned something. If you want to see how I made the background, you can check it out in my previous video. Thanks. Take care.